Okay, so, uh, the recording is on. We'll pray and uh, get started. Mm, who would like to pray? The mic. Okay, Chira, you can pray. Can I come? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your grace, mercy in our life, my Father. As we are in class, my Father, give us understanding. Give us your understanding that we can understand whatever the Bible teaches us, my Father. Help us to learn from your word, my Father. Lord, help us to know about you more and more, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, that we all are here alive, my Father, Lord. Thank you for everything that you did, my Father, Lord. Yes, Lord, we are learning because of you and for you, my Father. Thank you for everything, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And thank you. Thank you, Chira. Uh, we will continue in our uh, sessions. So please uh, turn to chapter 17. Um, so, so far, I hope that, you know, you have enjoyed what you have uh, learned. But uh, more importantly, apply. I know that some things may have been new, whereas some things may have been, um, you know, part of your life already. Uh, but you could strengthen yourself in what you al already have been practicing and uh, apply all the new things. Okay, So I uh, really hope that this uh, class has been a blessing to us. Uh, and as I've been saying, we'll complete as much as we can and uh, hopefully you know we should be able to uh, be done with the entire portions but if we are not uh, i will do an additional recording which you can you know look at listen to and learn from it so today we are going to talk about praying for praying over cities regions and nations uh, so far we've learned about the fact that one can pray personally uh, and develop their personal prayer life. But we also saw that intercession is possible. Intercession is to pray for others. While we pray for family members and church members, we see in scripture that God has a heart for places. So when I say places, it's cities, it's regions, it's uh, nations even. Uh, and so when we pray for an entire city, or an entire nation. Uh, it's very biblical. Uh, so as you look at scriptures, you would see, particularly in the Old Testament, when you know God uh, looks at a city and calls a city by name. So he doesn't address the city as, uh, OK, different sections of people, different communities of people. But he just says, oh, Jerusalem. So what's happening? There is an identity which that group of people or the communities which are knit together have as a city. So, you know, you hear names like that. You hear Babylon, you know, Babylon shall fall. So we recognize that God identifies an entire city and that he has an interest in these cities. Think about Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be destroyed because of their sinful lifestyle. But we see Abraham interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and God actually engages with Abraham. Uh, interestingly, like why would he be, why would he make the time to listen to Abraham when he says, okay, if there are so many righteous people, would you spare? Would you spare? So God gives an opportunity to people so that you know they can um, if they can present something or intercede he he will actually relent or he will stop uh, from pouring out his wrath on the people so that just shows that he is interested he does not want to punish but since there is no option you know uh, sin has consequences so he will have to go ahead and punish the people. So Sodom and Gomorrah, even a sinful city, God was actually giving them that space and saying, okay, if there are righteous people, yeah, maybe, maybe I can spare this place. Okay. Uh, and yes, Abraham, you can talk to me about this. So God loves cities. You would uh, see, you know, so many other examples, uh, Jonah, 
God sent him to Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh however you want to call it, Nineveh, and he tried escaping. He went to Tarshish. But God had an intention for the sinful people, right? If they don't hear about God, if they don't repent, then how is it that they can be, um, you know, how, how is it that they can be spared? So somebody had to take a message, and that was Jonah. Though he wanted to escape, God didn't let him. And he went there, he preached, right? He preached the message, um, and the people actually repented. So what is the outcome? Again, God relents. See, God, though we see that cities are sinful and there are consequences, God is actually waiting for his purpose for every city to be accomplished, and which is a good purpose. He wants them to be prosperous. He wants them to be blessed. So when Nineveh repented, what did God do? He had told Jonah, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that. And that's what he preached. But God didn't punish the people. So Jonah was so upset. He's like, God, but you said. You know, and then God gives him a lesson. A plant grows up and the plant dies. And uh, he gets very upset when the plant dies. He says, look, you uh, are so upset uh, about a plant which you never, you, you didn't make it. You didn't nurture it. And you're so upset that it died. How about all these people whom I have made and I love? And they don't know their right hand from the left. Or he's just saying um, they are ignorant about righteousness, sin, who is God, where is God, what is the goodness. They don't know anything. And why should I destroy them? You know, if they repent. So in all this, we're just understanding that God is waiting for people to respond. And when they do, uh, his purposes will be accomplished in cities and nations. Even Jerusalem, you know, there are many scriptures. I'm not going uh, through the scriptures because it's in your notes. You can always go and meditate on them. He calls out to Jerusalem, cries out to Jerusalem. In Luke 19, there is a passage where he says, Oh, Jerusalem, if you only knew the day of visitation or the fact that I'm working within you, but you're not realizing it as a city. The people did not realize that God was at work. Okay, So this is how God actually looks at nations. Um, and we are instructed to intercede for the nations. In Jeremiah 29, verse 7, there's a very uh, important um, scripture. It says, pray for the peace of the city where I have planted you, where I have uh, you know, established you. Because in its peace, you will have peace. So one way of looking at this is, we as believers carry spiritual authority to speak blessings, peace, justice, prosperity, whatever. Everything that is available in scripture, we can declare it over our city. Will it work? It's got to work. Because that is the reason God is saying, I want you to pray for your city. What if we don't pray for the city? What do you think? OK, fine. It's an option. But um, maybe I won't pray for the city. What will happen? Situation might go worse. OK, why would it go worse? Because nobody is praying. OK, so if we pray, what is the difference that it's going to make? OK, so the purpose of God will come to pass when we pray for the city. OK, so what else? Purpose of God will come to pass. What are we actually doing when we are praying? And what will happen if that prayer is not there for a city? OK, spiritual warfare, we'll come to that. Yeah, we are uh, using our authority against the demonic powers. That's true. What else? Hmm. OK, like prophetic prayer, right? So you pray into certain things, um, which, let's say, God has already revealed. And then 
when you pray, those things are, um, you know, averted. So yeah, that's 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 correct. You can so protection, right? Through your prayers, there's protection over the city. Through your prayers, uh, there can be demonic. You can go against the demonic powers. You can speak the purpose of God. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so the way we saw last week, praying for the lost. So when we pray, people can actually open their hearts to the Lord Jesus and uh, they can also receive salvation. Okay. Okay, what if we don't pray? Nobody is praying for the city. What will happen? Spiritually, what, what might happen? City will be in chaos. Why will the city be in chaos? I'm asking you. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's no one praying, nobody to declare the power of God over the city. Uh, that's correct. So, see, you can look at it this way. Imagine that, uh, you know, uh, a, a house or let's say your campus here, that is the city. Okay, now if there are certain things which are not done for this campus, uh, it is at danger, right? And we already know that the world is corrupted with sin, uh, and Satan is the small g, you know, god of this world, and he is very active in causing destruction. So, whether you like it or not, he will take the initiative to destroy everything that God has created. What if there was no fence? What if there were no documents to say that this belonged to a certain person? What if there were no people to maintain this place? Right? Basically, intrusion, intrusion, uh, destruction, calamity, all those things are what Satan and his demons do. So when we don't protect or when we don't understand, you know, what is what is its original purpose? We are allowing it to be destroyed, even though God intends good, right? So maybe this place, you know, is supposed to be used to equip people in the world and, uh, you know, to uh, uh, spend times in worship, experience the presence of so many wonderful things are there. But someone has to take charge to uh, say, hey, this place is for this. And uh, we have to stop the intruders. What if you keep the gate open all the time and you didn't have a watchman? Anybody will come. Anybody will do whatever they want. They will pick up stuff from your equipment from here. You can't ask them because we are doing nothing to preserve the place or ensure that the place is functional the way it was intended to function. Something similar is expected when we don't pray for the city. We're just letting it pass by. We have an active enemy. He can do whatever he wants. And then we complain. We say, oh, look at the city. It's such a sinful city. There's so much crime in the city. You know, and leaders are not making good decisions. But we understand these are the facts. However, there is a responsibility which a believer has towards the city. When we don't do our part, you know, we are keeping an open door for the enemy in a sense. Okay. So which is why we should never let that happen. We have a responsibility and we have to pray for the city. Or, you know, we always say stand in the gap, stand in the gap between the people and God. And uh, whatever has been provided by God for the city, by faith, you take it and you will see those things happening. So that is how you uh, understand praying for the city. So, you know, God is very interested. God is very interested. There are scriptures that say uh, if God's people pray, you know, Second Chronicles 7.14, many of you would have heard if my people who are called by my name, uh, if they would humble themselves and pray. If they would turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. So God is saying, if you come sincerely, humbly, uh, and you pray for your own land, I am going to heal it, no matter what condition it is in. And 
God is also responsible for the rise and fall of nations. Okay, this is simply the way we understand this is, though there are leaders in authority, when we pray, right, God can move, God can move, God can move in a sovereign way, he can determine, you know, the uh, establishing of a place or a nation, or he can determine the fall of a nation. So when you read about uh, kings like Nebuchadnezzar and all, so you'd see there, you know, how it worked, Cyrus. So the way God actually worked, even though there were some mighty nations in those days, you know, empires fell, uh, and uh, so many things happen. So at 1726, it says God is involved in the rise and fall of the nations even, not just cities, but nations. So since God is so interested, we must realize that you know we have to do what is required as believers. So um, we'll just look at a couple of other things that um, you know we see in the word of God. There are cities that experienced God's blessings in, in scripture. There are cities which were disobedient to God, which, um, you know, uh, received even prophecies, like you will be destroyed, isn't it? So prophets used to prophesy over cities. Uh, these things are seen in, in the Old Testament. Um, we also see that there are, as one of you pointed out, demonic strongholds over cities it's nothing new you know whenever we read about uh, believers authority and um, uh, like demonology the subject is there in your next uh, semester i think we have to look at it in a in a very um, you know like from a place i would say from the cross so it's only when you read only about you know demons and demonology that we get very intimidated and think, oh my goodness, how are we going to deal with all this? But when we understand our position in Christ and we understand what Jesus has done through the cross of Calvary, we will look at all these uh, you know activities of the devil uh, as things which we can overcome. So when we study, like in the book of Daniel, there is an incident in Daniel 10 where uh, Daniel is praying, but the, the answer to the prayer doesn't come because there are principalities okay, in the spiritual realm which are a hindrance for the prayer. right? But when you read about what kind of... Uh, principalities are there. It says the prince of uh, Persia and the prince of Greece. Right? Prince of Persia, prince of Greece. So who are these prince of Persia, prince of Greece? You see in Ephesians 6, Paul talks about it. He says principalities, you know, um, powers, uh, spirits of wickedness. So there is something like an hierarchy of demons. Among those demons, principalities, um we can we can understand that they are probably in charge of large regions okay so prince of persia means there is a demonic entity which works on you know destruction of persia so every nation there is every city there is okay we can come to this conclusion that there are demons which are corresponding to you know every city every place because the way god's intention is to bless and prosper what is satan's intention we got to destroy and he is very very intentional he is very intentional on doing that so there is the prince of greece and the prince of persia it just tells us that when we pray for cities Remember when we said we are praying for the lost? What was another aspect there? I said prayer is important, plus one more thing is important. What is that? Yeah, they have to make their own decision. But prayer and love, okay. 
fasting faith okay you you're all correct but i'm trying to get that one word declaration okay okay someone's away from god okay and you're preaching to them you're praying for them what else do you have to do in the spiritual realm warfare okay so correct what you all are saying is is correct but spiritual warfare spiritual warfare is what is expected same thing when it comes to cities why spiritual warfare yeah it's so clear there are demonic powers which are engaged to destroy the cities see god has a good purpose always but there is the demonic realm so prayer is one thing but part of prayer has to be spiritual warfare okay so keep that in mind whenever we are praying for cities nations regions there is this additional aspect spiritual warfare because we are also using our authority against demonic powers okay so that's how it works so remember this while praying for the lost and also while praying for um cities so as a church you know i've been saying we must look at um we must look at demonic powers from the place of the victory of the cross what did jesus say uh, in matthew 16 verses 18 19 he said um uh, you know i give you the keys of the kingdom so we have the authority we have the authority and in the works of jesus you would notice that he never gave um, you know a little bit of room for demonic strongholds the moment he recognized that people are being oppressed by demon spirits he immediately cast it out right so that kind of um, urgency he had because he knew that he carried the authority you know we if we don't understand that yes we have been given this form of authority we will also linger and say okay you know we'll deal with it slowly oh i'm so scared why because god's people are perishing for lack of knowledge our knowledge is i already have the authority right uh, and i have the keys of the kingdom i have the authority to bind and loose okay what kind of uh, spirits are operational remember we talked about spiritual mapping in the spiritual mapping we said maybe there is uh, strife maybe there is violence maybe there is alcoholism you know some kind of a specialized um, way in which the demons are affecting the people i can bind it okay uh, and whenever we are praying for cities and nations regions another very important thing is it is good to pray collectively can i pray alone yes we can pray there is no problem but it is more effective when we are all in agreement in prayer so we usually say a city wide battle is won through city wide prayer so when i say city wide prayer uh, it will also mean that not just one local church see one local church is not good enough for us to fight for the city will god do yes he will do because we see in um, passages of scripture that god is looking for one man there was nobody you know as a 59 uh, 59 16 ezekiel 22 29 31 one man to stand in the gap so one man is good enough actually but there is something about the prayer of unity and so if church is in a city okay when i say unity there can be a lot of differences you know we pray like this they pray like that you know we sing like this they sing like that we can have all our differences but when we are born again okay we are part of the kingdom of god we can unite our hearts to bless the city okay that's very important so we have to maintain that unity 
we will talk next semester we will talk about this um, uh, this teaching called the kingdom of god and the kingdom of god does not necessarily mean one local church yes one local church is part of it but we are all part of the kingdom right so with that understanding when the the believers the leaders right all the pastors everyone with one heart we pray for our city it's very powerful you got it and which is why we must also maintain that that uh, sense of you know brotherly love for others just because you know i i do ministry differently doesn't mean that you know i uh, don't relate rightly with somebody else who does ministry so a city wide battle can only be won with city wide prayer and for that you need oneness of heart we may uh, it's good there are some cities where you know people have come together all the churches have come together some of you may have heard of uh, which one i oneness yeah are you talking about any particular city okay oneness okay he said oneness no i was getting the name of this place i think it's called cali uh, in uh, argentina if i'm not wrong and a few years ago there was a video which they released a video and a documentary uh, where they talked about how uh, churches of the city gathered in auditoriums so they used to come together and they used to pray they used to um, you know have this all night worship and from that documentary um, in that documentary they recorded that there were certain things which were happening in that city like you know uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, peddling of drugs there was uh, um, there was murder violence you know gun shoot people getting shot on the roads crazy stuff was going on but when the churches of the city started coming and praying like this there was a marked change in the atmosphere of the city you, you get it so just a simple example you can also like google it you will find the documentary on youtube they put it up on youtube but how did it happen i'm sure there are many examples and we will also study about revivals in revivals also there are many examples of people coming together believers coming together churches coming together and praying together which blesses the city okay but uh, just for something for you to um, visualize and in this particular i think the video is called transformations if you search for it uh, you will also notice that they not only talk about the the falling of crime rates but they also saw that the produce uh, from farming was something really amazing you know that particular year they the farmers they did, did their regular stuff and when they harvested apparently the vegetables and you know stuff that they got out uh, were huge compared to any other time when they have harvested a pla you know uh, stuff over there and uh, they were attributing it to the prayer and the blessing um, of the of the believers over the city so i'm just giving you one example you can look it up it's very uh, inspiring so in this way we must recognize that we are here with authority as believers the cross of jesus has destroyed the devil 2000 years ago we are here to enforce our victory okay wherever we go we have to take charge what did jesus teach in the lord's prayer uh, uh, matthew 6:10 you know he said pray like this thy kingdom come okay when we see evil that's not the kingdom of god but when we see righteousness when we see justice we see peace we see god's love we see god's restoration his redemption that is the kingdom of god as believers that's what we are saying lord let your kingdom come let the enemy you know, leave this place and let your kingdom be established in every city let your kingdom be established in my city that's how we must actually pray for our cities so a couple of more things 
that we can begin to uh, understand about the city. I already said God has a plan. God has a purpose. When God talks about Jerusalem, he says, uh, you would see the prophecy that God intended for Jerusalem to be a joy, you know, a city of joy. Okay. So that way, every city God has a dream. We have to pray and ask God, like, God, what do you want my city to be? What is your word for my city? When we know what God's word is for our city, we must begin to pray. That, okay, God, this is your intention. I bless this city. Let this city be a, a place of refuge, a place of peace, a place of excellence, whatever God intends for that city to be. Unfortunately, though God has a plan and a purpose, what did I say? In Psalm 48, it says, verses 1 and 2, that God intended for Jerusalem to be joy, okay, a city of joy. But what is happening now? What kind of a place is it? It's it's ridden by a lot of conflict. Uh, it's, uh, you know, ridden by um, like political battles, so many challenges. God's original intention is something, but something else is going on. So you see, there is a battle. We have to engage in this battle. Unless believers pray, Satan is very happy to make every city a seat of destruction. Okay. So we even see in Revelation, God talks about a particular city called Pergamos. I don't know if you've heard about this, but Revelation 2 verses 12 to 13, it says that Pergamos is the seat of Satan. So can a city become a seat of Satan means what? If he's sitting in a city, it means he's ruling there. He's reigning there. You can find all kinds of evil if a city is the seat of Satan, right? So it just goes to show us that if we don't take charge, like I gave you the example, this building, this campus, if we don't take charge, if we don't, you know, stake claim, hey, the papers say it's ours, you know, you intruders, you cannot come inside. If we don't construct, you know, the walls and the gate, and have a watchman and all that, somebody will come, somebody will take over, and they will stake claim. So that's that's what it says. The Pergamos has become the seat of Satan. He does whatever he wants in Pergamos, but we should not let it happen. And today, as we notice, you know, all so many cities in the world, we could say a lot of challenges, isn't it? What kind of challenges do you see in cities? Drugs, okay. Someone said drugs. Sorry? Politics. I can't hear you. Political issues. <laughs> Corruption. Corruption, political. Okay, political challenges. Okay, that's right. Uh, what else? What else do you see? Yeah, injustice. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, okay. Huh? Murder, violence. Huh. So what are those works? Demonic works are there, we agree. But what kind of works do we, do we see? Suicide, yes. Suicide, untimely death. Addiction, conflicts, yeah, between communities, communal disharmony, yeah, that's true. Hatred, yeah, communal uh, disharmony, different religions come and beliefs, people fight with each other. Yeah, rape, injustice against women, children, elderly, greed. Yeah, greed. Greed is there. Lack of infrastructure, poverty. You see? So, you know, in the cross, there is righteousness. There is justice. Okay, there is God's love to restore. 
there is abundant life. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So what is our intention when we pray for the city? We are seeking the blessings of God and saying, God, let all this evil be replaced by your goodness. You rule and reign. When we say, thy kingdom come, it's not, we're not talking any political thing. No, not at all. We could have people of some other faith in office. No problem. But as believers, we have been given this uh, responsibility and authority to bless our city. Right? All we are saying is, God, let all these evil things be removed. Let your rule and reign, which is the rule and reign of love, justice, power, let everything come. So that's how we go about it. But when God sees sin in the city, what do you think happens to him? How does God respond to sin? He's closing his eyes. Yeah, okay. And everything happen. Let it, everything happen. Do you think he's closing his eyes? No. How? Okay, give me a scripture. If you're saying something, tell me why. He's not closing his eyes. Substantiate. Tell me why. He loves his people. Okay, where in the scriptures have you seen that God is responding to sin? What did he do when he saw sin? Some examples you tell me. Okay, someone here says it grieves his heart. Okay, I agree with you. It grieves his heart. Prove it to me. <laughs> Jesus? Correct. So he looks at Jerusalem and he says, you didn't recognize your day of visitation. Oh, Jerusalem. He weeps over Jerusalem. He's grieving. Okay, so that, that makes sense. What else when he sees sin? Angry? True. Sodom and Gomorrah, very good. Now you're all Bible students. This is how you should talk. When you say something, you should say, where is it? You know? Uh, okay, he was angry. God gets angry when he sees an example. Sodom and Gomorrah, very good. Give me one more example. Nineveh, very good. So when he saw sin, what, what did he do? Correct. So he knew the consequence, but he made a way for people to respond. Right? If they repent, I will not bring it upon you. So you see, by scripture, we can understand, oh, okay, this is how God works when he sees sins in a city. So we can imagine now, okay, this is how God must be thinking about, you can think Bangalore, some of us are from Bangalore, some of us are from you know, some of the cities. Um, what are the cities you're from? And maybe here also uh, in our chat, if you can type your cities, that'll be good. Which cities are we all from? Okay, Assam city? Then Sukhya, okay. That's a new name for me to pronounce. Uh, then Uttarakhand, Dehradun, UP, Farukabad. Okay, Farukabad. See, so many cities. Um, yeah, Bangalore, Bangalore, Kolkata, Francis, Toronto. <laughs> if you don't talk properly, I can't hear you. <laughs> Trivandrum, okay. <laughs> Francis is from Trivandrum. Guntur. Andhra, I know. Where in Andhra? Vijayawada. Okay, Vijayawada. Bhimavaram. Okay, hey, nice to hear. You know all the city's names. Okay, we have people from here. You have Kohima. Uh, oh, Moroto City in Uganda. We have uh, Belgaum. Very nice. See, all of us are from so many different cities, and God is looking at each one of us for those cities, right? And He's saying, You carry the authority, you can bless, you can declare.
God's kingdom here. Don't let the devil play his havoc. You know how it says about Pergamos that the seat of Satan is in the city of Pergamos. We don't want that. Instead, even if there's one person, like you know, uh, Isaiah 59 verse 16, God was looking for one person. He was wondering, is there one person to pray for the city? We can be that one person. Uh, but of course, if we make an effort to have the unity of heart and pray together as believers in a city, we can see a change and a transformation. Okay, there's uh, more people sharing here. Salem. Okay, we have someone from Salem. That's nice. Nice to see. Okay, so the body of Christ can shift the balance in the city. And I gave you that example of transformation. You know, what does the Bible call us? Here at APC, every Sunday you hear salt and light. Salt and light. We have a job to do. You know, we are not just here um, to... I mean, of course, we have a blessed life in Christ, but there is a mandate, okay? Uh, and there is work to do. And that's why God is equipping us also, because we can do it. He has called us to do it. He has empowered us to do it. And we are the salt and light, the churches in a city, the leaders of the city. When we gather together, just begin to pray, things will change, right? Some of us will say, oh, what is the point? Only prayer. Somebody has to do other things also. No. Like uh, if just if you take, for example, pollution and uh, the city is so dirty, there's plastic everywhere. What is the use? Some people say uh, um, working hands are better than praying lips. Somebody said huh? in your mind, you thought, how prophetic. <laughs> no, but you see, we understand that. Action is important. We're not saying action is not important. But the first step, you begin with prayer. I'm sure God will give us more ideas on uh, you know, what we can do to swing into action about issues. Okay, So God will lead us. But first step is begin to pray. And moreover, that, that was just a quote. It's not a Bible verse. In case you try to search in Bible Gateway or something, it's not a verse. All right, moving on. Uh, so we have to be like watchmen for the city. You know, in the olden times, they, they had watchmen who would stand on the, they had city walls. You remember Jericho? Yeah, the walls, fortress. So these watchmen will stand and they will stand and they will look into the distance that was their job day and night why because they are looking and seeing is there any attack coming on the city if there is they have to immediately alert the uh, military or is there a messenger in those days they would also have messengers you know, they'll come with some good news they'll come running with some good news or they'll come running with some bad news so that was the job of the watchman stand and be alert you know what the bible says in isaiah 62 verses 6 and 7 it says we are the god has set watchmen for jerusalem who it says watchmen don't give god any rest in other words what god is saying is there are people that god wants to engage in prayer when we pray, though we are not standing on any city walls, spiritually what are we doing? It's like that. We are watching over the city. We are praying. We are watchmen over the city. So when we pray for the city, imagine yourself like a watchman. In the spiritual realm, there are things that may come towards the city which are saying, stop, go back. But there are doors that you can open and say thy kingdom come let blessing come let prosperity come you know let joy justice let it come into my city so we are watchmen and our duty is to pray spiritual watchmen what do they do they pray and that is what god says we are as watchmen we are here to protect we are here to open and close the gates um, we are here to maintain or preserve uh, we are also here to observe many things. So it's basically something like shepherd. The shepherd takes care of the sheep, isn't it? So similarly, when we pray, in a sense, 
we are shepherding we are protecting the city we are uh, nurturing the city okay so that's our job as warriors and intercessors so uh, take time to pray for the city in our notes there is an entire list which you can use to pray i'm not going to go through it um it says you know we can pray for the city wide church that's one of the prayer points always pray that the when i say the church in the city i don't mean you know grace church love church faith church no all the churches together spiritually when god sees the city he sees the church of bangalore so in that church of bangalore apc is just one church but the church of bangalore is the believers you know the leaders that god has raised up in the city he sees like that so we should pray lord let the church of bangalore be strong may it be enriched same way you can pray for your own cities all the names we saw let the that the church of belgaum let the church of salem it's a spiritual thing you know we are praying for strength pray for every city let the church of that city be strong in the name of jesus lord raise up equip them let the power of god be demonstrated so that is one prayer point which we can pray then of course we can pray that uh, you know let the church be a place of your presence let it be salt and light um and then you know we could pray for things like uh repenting on behalf of the city i'll just give you two three points remaining you can see one is pray for the city ch city wide church second is repentance now there is something in the word of god where though we have not done it we can pray with identification we call it identification okay i'm not going to stop just give me one minute and then only i'll stop so identification where someone has sinned and we are praying as if we have sinned like our sorrow is as if we have done that is called identification so we can repent on behalf of the city did we sin no but the sorrow we carry helps us pray prayers like god forgive us so the church can repent on behalf of the city you understand so we can pray prayers of repentance mm, then of course we can pray god let there be a revival i will talk about it later in detail uh, there are many prayers here which we can pray for revival pray for peace uh, pray for all the issues um, pollution marriages families young people corruption injustice dignity of women orphans unemployed people in the prison so many things are there god puts it on your heart best is make a list then you will be able to pray for everything and of course engage in spiritual warfare how do we engage in spiritual warfare just go about doing things that god has called us to do the way you see in the book of acts you know peter went uh, he cast out demons he healed people similarly paul went he did the same thing you see entire city is turning around city of philippi city of ephesus you know city of corinth there was a huge impact because they went and demonstrated the power of the holy spirit okay so with that we have finished this chapter you can take a break um we will restart at 10:02 okay so you can take those two minutes also see you soon thank you Okay, online students, if you have any doubts, please do post it uh, on the chat, and I'll do my best to answer it. So, yeah, we'll have a break. Thank you.